I choose to take my starting point in the current events. And you all seen this picture, the text that was on the um, UN skyscraper in New York. And this text actually blew me away. Uh, perhaps not so much for the content, because we all know this, but for the fact that it's actually there now. It's out in the public space, it's shared, at least in some groups on the internet. And I find the text very radical. So I will, I will read it to you. We can no longer save the world by playing by the rules. Because the rules have to be changed. We need a systems change rather than individual change. But you cannot have one without the other. And so I ask you to please wake up and make the changes required possible. To do your best is no longer good enough. We must all do the seemingly impossible. Everything needs to change. And it has to start today. And this is, uh, of course, nothing new to us. But the fact that this is now out in the public, that the rules have to change. We cannot just do twi tweaking of the present system. The fundaments of the present system needs to change. And it might even be that everything needs to change, even the system. It might be that we are in the beginning of a great transformation. And as Greta says here, it's a transformation both within ourselves and outside. And I think this is really the realization of this transformation, that it is a fundamental paradigm shift that we are entering into, and that is a change within us and outside us. I think that is really what is bringing the emerged people together. And I think that is the attraction we have with this gathering. Because somehow it's easy to say this, but how do we do this? And who should be doing this? If we need to change the rules and if everything needs to change, who should do that? And of course we can't trust them to do that change. And Greta can't do it alone. So of course the change will come from each of us. But it has to come from the right inner place. And it is that understanding that is bringing us together. And you could say that we are part of, or some of, the imagined selves that Margaret Wheatley talk is talking about. The cells in the crystals, when the caterpillar goes in and gets completely dissolved into just a mesh, a biological mesh, with complete chaos, there are cells that recognize that we need to build something new. And they start to connect. Even the immune system of the caterpillar is fighting the imagined cells. But the imagined cells start to find each other and to relate. And out of this relation, something new emerges, the butterfly. And of course, we do not know what this butterfly will look like. And we do not even know if there will be a butterfly. And it's a little bit up to us if there will be a butterfly and not just a mess. So I think I saved a lot of time by summarizing 20 slides now in, in, in this short introduction. So we are already behind schedule. So I will just flip through some of the slides that I wanted to talk about. So this meta crisis of our time, that's what, where we are in right now. I summarize that in three graphs. Okay. So this is the crisis and the solution. <laughs> okay, so who, who recognizes, what is this? Three graphs, can I, can I have some suggestions? This is first, then it's that, and then it's this one. Exponential growth. 
This is exponential growth, e exactly, you understand? Exponential tech or exponential growth, technological development. We have never ever been in such a development like we are right now. It's unprecedented in, in, in human history in many ways. And I could uh, elaborate that, but I will not do that. No, that, that is the technological growth. Exactly, Belkana model, two paradigms. The old paradigm going down and the new paradigm being, being, being uh, born. You, you can look at it like, like this. If everything needs to change, yes, we will have a paradigm shift. And there will be an old paradigm dying and a new paradigm emerging. And this is the process of the Belkana Institute. All of you, I believe, were here. 20, 10, or 5 years ago. You were all innovators in your various fields, and probably you all felt very alone. You had nobody to talk to 10 years ago, if you were in the field 10 years ago. But then something started to happen 10 years ago, 5 years ago, or something, and we started to form networks. And this is one of those occasions where these people can, the way we can actually meet and start to interact, and perhaps even move into communities of practice, like uh, Incredible Cluster, or the Co-Creation Loft, or all the other organizations that you are all starting everywhere in Europe, and potentially everywhere in the world, things are popping up. Uh, our, European, our network is still mainly European, but we are really trying to reach out and see what is happening in other parts of the world, not least uh, Africa, by Rakhumulafe, that Pamela quoted, uh, is an African philosopher who is very much in the, in the network, and also to see in China, where you have the Taoist tradition, where they have been thinking in systems terms for thousands of, of years. Okay, so the last time we had a paradigm shift, and some of you have seen me doing, doing this before, was when we went from the medieval paradigm the dogmatic religious paradigm that had its um, high point in the Middle Ages. And then technological development happened. We had the printing press, but not just the printing press, a lot of things happening, and we went into chaos. We had the Enlightenment and the French Revolution, and Europe was in a mess for 50 to 100 years. Revolution, Napoleonic Wars, and all of that. But out of that mess, something new emerged. And that is what we today call modernity. Modernity came out of that. We completely new organizations and thinkings and worldview and new glasses to see the world and, and, and all of that. So if that was the last time when everything changed, if we need a paradigm shift again now, then of course the old paradigm is modernity. That had its peak. Here, I have a picture from Scandinavia where we definitely had the peak in the 60s or 70s. And then technological development happened. We got internet, not just internet, but a lot of things, and we enter into this chaos. The meta crisis that we are in today. And the question is, what might be born out of that? And of course, we do not know. One way of looking at this is using the world value studies. And I think many of you are familiar with this diagram that has during 30 years been mapping all <coughs> the world's countries and their development on the axis of internal motivation. We might even a little bit correlate this with adult development and the change in world view going from a traditional dogmatic up to a secular, uh, rationalistic worldview. And, of course, in the old paradigm shift, before the old paradigm shift, all the countries were here. Even the extreme ones here, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, we, we, we were poor and dogmatic uh, countries. We were all here. The world, the space ended here. And then, of course, this space opened up, like that, and we moved into this space. And I think that we right now are about to break out of the box. 
So the new thing that we are looking for is out in this space. And if this goes from survival to self-actualization, I think here we are going to self-transcendence, looking beyond our ego. Here we are strengthening our ego. Here we are individuals. We have indi individuated, but we still want to belong to something bigger than ourselves. Ego transcendence, self-transcendence, or something in that direction. And on that axis, we went from dogmatic religion to uh, rationalistic science, even postmodern worldview. And we are now breaking out of the postmodern worldview into something up there that you might call an integral worldview or a metamodern worldview or something like that. There are many words out there. But one thing joining all those new ways of looking at the world is exactly as Jonathan mentioned, that we have multi perspectives. We understand that we have natural systems, for example. We have the inner world, our souls, that follow completely different rules and ways of understanding that. And then we have society, our collective imaginary, that is a bit of combination, an amalgamation of our inner worlds with the outer reality. So we don't know what this is. And in Berlin I showed this picture. And I think that we are all here a little bit like these um, seven blind persons checking out this new paradigm. And none of us see the whole picture. We are all holding on, on to important parts of the totality. And by getting together like this, we can start to try to perceive the bigger picture. And of course, if these guys were talking to each other, passing information, it would be easier to see the total picture. But of course, and here is uh, what's complicating matters, and here is our challenge. And the challenge is that we are not just trying to find out what is happening. We are also the conscious agents making that happening. So how can we both try to be open and perceptive of what is happening, what wants to be born, and at the same time be conscious agents in making and help, helping that future to realize in a positive way. And that, of course, brings us to the third graph I had, which is the graph of what? Bifurcation. Bifurcation, yeah. In any complex system, our mind, our society, or whatever, when complexity increases, you come to a point where the present system will not hold any longer. And then the system, whether it's a society, if it's consciousness, or if it's a natural system, will either step up in complexity and depth and organize in a new, more elegant, more complex, deeper way, or break down. And that's where we are right now. We are rapidly reaching this bifurcation point. And I think that we are all here in this room. We somehow feel a calling that even though we know that this is a process that cannot be managed, you cannot manage a complex system, we still feel, rightly, that it's possible to influence the likelihood of society taking the upper path. Many times throughout civilization, sorry, many times throughout human history, civilizations have collapsed. Back then, we always had backup civilizations in other places of the earth. Okay? Right now, we don't have a backup civilization. And we don't have a backup planet. So we only have one chance. So we better try to make this transition as likely as possible. I will finish with this one and then I have two, two more side slides. So I will finish with this one and say that I also think we all need, that we all feel that we need uh, a new worldview again, new glasses. 
to, what, to see the world before we can really understand what, what is uh, going on. Um, and there are many takes on that. And I will just here put on the table my sketch, what I think a new worldview might contain. And this is my personal uh, ideas, but I hope that it will resonate with many of you in the room. You might have put it in another order or have some other headings. And we can discuss this dur during the day today. So I will just read them out very, very quickly and put them on the table. I think the view of ourselves uh, need to change. We need to go from a paradigm of separation to connection and relationship. Our view of the world needs to change. We need to go from a world of things to a world of evolving processes. Our view of our mind needs to change. From the view of a rational and fixed mind of the Enlightenment philosopher, the blank slate and the rational uh, human, homo economicus, we need to understand that that's a deeply flawed image, a view of our mind. We need to move to a constantly evolving living systems model of our mind. Our view of society, from something that is given to something socially constructed out of our own thinking and acting today, the social imaginary out there, the collective imaginary, is something we have created, but it's meeting us as individuals as something that is absolute, more or less absolute. My favorite example there is money and oxygen. Okay? As individuals, we are today in today's society totally dependent on oxygen to live and on money. Okay? Even if we all go together, the whole of humanity, and make a decision, we cannot get rid of our dependence of oxygen. Nor can we get rid of the planetary boundaries. But, as an individual, I might need money today as much as I need oxygen. But if we all go together, we can change the concept of money. Because money is just part of our collective imaginary. Okay? But sometimes, we mix this up. Money and market is our imaginary. But we think that we can actually negotiate with the planetary boundaries, whereas we are all subject to the fixed market, when it's actually the opposite. So we need to realize that collectively we are masters of our collective imaginary. And finally, our view of our lives, from focusing on material success as an end in itself, to focus on purpose and on meaning. The meaning crisis, as John Bellet is talking about. Some reference points, I don't need to mention them all, you recognize you come from these different uh, perspectives. If we have some direction in this di development, it is actually for the, the capacity of our mind and our societal culture to evolve. And, and this is a very important step going from the the po postmodern relativism, there is actually a direction to this development, but there is no specific path. This is my last slide. <clears throat> we also all come from different directions, and we have different personalities. And I think if we are going to um, be able to uh, do anything uh, and have any impact on the world, we need to recognize that we need all three of these parts. Some of us are stronger in certain parts. I'm certainly the strongest in doing. I also do a bit of thinking, writing books, but I'm better in doing. This place is my weak spot in the being part. But I certainly recognize that this transition is not a mental thing. This transition is nothing that we can engineer. This transition 
has to be a transition in our being. So how can we, how can we do and recognize that? But how can we also recognize, at the same time as we all need to be in all these three fields, we are stronger in some. And we have to honor and cherish that some people are focusing on the different parts. And we can only, in a gathering like this, do so much in each part. And we need separate gatherings for the various parts. So, with that, I'll leave it to Pamela. Thank you. Thank you.